Today, we're going to be discussing the end game of the U.S. empire. And I know that sounds like a loaded statement, but wait until you hear what I have to say. And I think you'll understand. I think towards the end of this podcast, it's going to be pretty clear uh, with some of the information I'm going to give you. I hate to say that. I'm a, you know, an army veteran. I get it. I love my country. I believe in the apple pie, Chevrolet. Well, I'm kind of a Ford guy, but I actually have both. <laughs> but th- we are at that point where America literally is diminished within the world standard. Now, we're surviving right now because of bully tactic But we are rapidly losing ground. I think this whole thing, again, I'm going to go back and say it. I think it was an accident by ignorance. I have many believing that these actions uh, with Russia and what's going on is actually on purpose, which is probably true, that this is going to cause the uh, collapse of the U.S. empire. It can go both ways. I know there's a lot of people out there still saying and rooting that, you know, don't, you know, the United States dollars this franchise and uh, it's going to be around for a long time. But I think we are accelerating rapidly, way faster than most people realize. And it goes into the seven stages of an empire. But just recently, now this is putting, I think, a big dent into the relationship the United States has with its friends and allies around the world. But the Western nations have now agreed to disconnect Russian banks from SWIFT. And for those that are not quite familiar with SWIFT, it's basically their interbank transfer system. It's how countries transfer money from one country to another as they do international trade. The United States predominantly controls SWIFT. And we would use it uh, as a bully tactic if countries didn't really do what we'd say. We'd tell them we'd cut them off from SWIFT. I remember when Barack Obama did that to a French bank because they were doing business with Iran. And it cost that French bank like $5 billion. And then, and then Obama turns around and says, sends all that cash and stuff to Iran. I mean, we are just sick in the head. But the SWIFT was always the world's platform for international transfer, for money transfer systems. But now, not only are we doing sanctions, they're, they're going. Now, this is, by the way, this isn't a shock to Russia. Russia, China, and others in the East have their own version of SWIFT. They've created it years ago. I think they knew this was going to be coming So it's not like Russia is cut off from the world. It's just that Russian banks are going to be cut off to some extent from the West. But that's going to harm the West way more than it does Russia in the East. So now the United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, Canada, United States, France, and the European Commission have all agreed to impose tough financial sanctions, newer sanctions on Russia. Coming out of Berlin here just recently, they were talking about uh, the UK, Germany, Italy, Canada, US, France, which I think all these countries are done. I mean, Canada, are you kidding me? These people are just whacked out up there, government-wise. I think there's a lot of good Canadian people, but the forget it. And Europeans, they're done. I don't, there's a whole lot that's going on over there in Europe that is actually attractive. I'll tell you that. But these people agreed to impose these tough sanctions on Russia, including disconnecting some of its banks from the SWIFT system. The German government spokesman uh, Heinrich told reporters uh, a few weeks ago that all Russian banks who are already under, under international sanctions, as well as other Russian banks, if necessary, will be disconnected from the SWIFT. Russian President Putin said in a televised address that in response to a request by the heads of the Donbass Republic, which is over in Ukraine, he had made a decision to carry out a special operation there to protect the people. And we've been suffering, he says, abuse and genocide by the Ukrainian regime for eight years, which is true, by the way, because these are Nazis. So for all of you who think you're supporting Ukraine, 
you better study because you look foolish by saying it because Ukrainians are Nazis. There's nothing good about a Nazi. We put the Nazis in Ukraine. Keep that in mind. We did it in 2014 when we did the coup. The U.S., when I say that, these are real Nazis, and they're evil, and they've been killing innocent people in the Donbass. Russia just got tired of it and said, we're going to come and protect you. And they're trying to make you think that Russia invaded this sovereign country, which is all completely ridiculous. And believe me, I want us to be great, but I can't stand, and I'm done with our just, just evil agenda on the world. We have got to stop this evil power elite we have in our country. It's just not good and not healthy. So he comes out and talks about this, and he was stressing that Moscow had no plans for occupying Ukraine territory. He just wanted to denazification of the country. Well, after the announcement, the United States and the European Union and UK and some other countries announced they were imposing these sanctions on Russia, and that's kind of how all this got started. The European Union is set to disconnect these banks from the international SWIFT system, and we commit to ensuring that a certain number of Russian banks are removed from SWIFT, they said. The United States and their allies have agreed to disconnect these banks and they're not from the interbank system. And the Russian forces are not going to back down. They are unleashing their assault on Kiev and other Ukrainian cities, and they're not going to back down. Now, we are saying we are committed to undertaking the following measures. First, we're going to commit to ensuring that the Russian banks are removed from SWIFT, and then we'll ensure that these banks are disconnected from the international financial system. Now, think about what they're saying. They think, number one, the West, that they can steal hundreds of billions of dollars from Russia. Now they're going to disconnect them from the world financial system. But here is where this gets really interesting. So for those of you that hung on to the podcast for it by now, here is why this is a big deal. The de-dollarization, meaning countries are now moving away from the dollar at a rapid pace, is accelerating. So we are talking about, hey, we are going to cut you off from the SWIFT system and we are going to keep you from the international financial system. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, United States. The world is already going away from the United States. You had Saudi Arabia stand up in Davos and declare that the petrodollar is now dead, which, mind you, the petrodollar is the reason why we had the American dream in the last 50 years, because we were able to print money into the stratosphere and everybody had to use our dollars and buy our treasuries because they needed energy. And Saudi Arabia was controlling that because they were ahead of OPEC. They declared they are no longer going to just accept U.S. dollars, that they will start accepting foreign currencies. That was just the beginning you have a huge acceleration of de-dollarization. Malaysia, Japan just announced that the dollar is no longer necessary. India, a huge nation, has now said that the dollar isn't really necessary and they're now doing trades in their own currencies. And this is just the beginning, mind you. Our allies are joining the BRICS. The Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa alliance, the BRICS are actually starting to form their own currency. But in the meantime, these countries are now doing business with one another outside the dollar. Even Russia and Saudi or China and Saudi Arabia have sparked a major deal where China was going to finance and Russia or Saudi Arabia was going into China and they were building an enormous refining facility. And they're doing all of this transaction in their currencies, not using the dollar. So now you have literally two thirds, probably 60% of the world are rapidly moving away from the U.S. dollar. 
And the fact that they're announcing it is huge. It's not that they're just doing it behind the scenes and they're kind of slow walking it to try to keep the U.S. happy. No, they're flat out telling the United States, yeah, you're not as relevant anymore as you used to be. We no longer need the dollar and they're moving away. Now, why is this happening? Number one, people are sick and tired around the world of the dollar hegemony. They're tired of the United States. We are bullies. China laid it out in that speech, if you hadn't heard it, wow, a few weeks ago, when they told the United States you've been around for like 250 years and 236 of them, you've been at war. And they they claim that it's the United States that's destabilizing the world. Now, I get it. We were supposedly going after bad guys and defending against communism that the West created, mind you. That, that whole Cold War with Russia never would have happened if Germany didn't invade Russia and kill tens of millions of people. Yeah, granted, it was Nazis. Oh, Nazis, they're that word again, right? Like Ukraine. That's why Russia built the Soviet Union and why they had the Cold War. If you were Russia, you'd be pissed off too. Now, they didn't really do a good job at it. I think it was a really bad approach, but they were pissed. They were going to make sure they took as much territory as they could to protect their land so the West can never invade again. And mind you, that's not the only time the West did it, because before that, it was Napoleon. So this isn't new. But the world is tired of the United States. We are bullies and we don't negotiate in a friendly way. We, we go back on our word. We cancel agreements, the Minsk agreement. We are the ones that, well, Germany, they create this Minsk agreement. And it purely was designed to back down everybody and say, hey, we will never, the Minsk agreement was we will never, the West will never go into Ukraine. Ukraine will stay in neutral territory. You have to understand that Ukraine is a bowling alley right into Russia, and so it had to maintain neutrality. And now you have the West downright declaring that Ukraine is going to be part of NATO. It's not going to happen. It will lead to nuclear war, if that's the case. And so here we are in the West, we violate the Minsk agreement, we make a deal, and then we totally backstab the East, and secretly we were putting Nazis in Ukraine and building up Ukraine, and then the Ukrainians were bombing, now they were calling them terrorists in the East, which they were not, these were just Russian citizens, and you have to understand the history of Ukraine, Ukraine's not even a real country, so people stop it. It's not a country. It never really was. It was always territory of Russia for the most part and neutral territory. So we violate our agreements and the world is getting tired of it. And we push people around and the world is getting tired of it. And the reason you have to understand this is really important is because the seven stages of an empire, when the seventh stage, now we're in stage six right now. And when I say seven stages of an empire, that means seven stages until an empire collapses. And I know a lot of people are not going to believe that's happening right now. Well, you're not reading between the lines. And you better get prepared. It's beyond just gold and silver, mind you. There's a lot of preparation. I know a lot of people don't know what to do about it, but you better start thinking Because the seven stages of an empire, when we get to the seventh stage, usually all through history, empires collapse, just like the Romans and everyone. You just study history and you'll see. The seventh stage is when the world loses confidence in the country's currency. And here we are right now which I'll have to admit, I kind of figured it was coming, but I am shocked at the pace of de-dollarization. And most Americans are just completely unaware how important 
the de-dollarization topic is. They don't realize the impact. You think we have inflation now. You haven't seen inflation. The inflation we have now is not getting better. It can't because we've printed too much currency. The only reason energy prices were even down is because we drained our strategic petroleum reserve that meant for war, and we were selling it on the market to the Chinese, out of all people. And by doing so, we were able to keep the prices down, but that's failing, and now you're going to start seeing prices rise in energy. You wait and see. And now you have OPEC and the nations cutting oil to maintain those prices because they need prices high for oil just to maintain their country budget. But we're now seeing the acceleration of de-dollarization where India, Japan out of all people, mind you, announcing the dollar is really no longer relevant and we're going to start to do business outside the dollar. Malaysia just came out and said it. The country list is enormous. Brazil said it. Brazil just aligned with China. China is rapidly growing in influence, and I mean rapidly. And with these countries announcing that the dollar really isn't as important, I know, I see the talking heads that just say, oh, we are still dominant and we're excellent and don't worry about it. And I I just absolutely disagree. 100%. I think you better be prepared because I can see that dollar value completely collapse. And when it does, you want to talk about inflation, number one, and two, your buying power will be destroyed. For those that don't have gold and silver to offset that, there's a big problem in the supply chain, gold and silver right now. It's very difficult to get certain products. Silver is still available, but it's getting more difficult. I'm telling you, I'm in the industry. I know. We are seeing the beginning stages of the seventh stage of an empire right now. It is happening. And here's the problem. I don't see how we put that back in the box. This is a Pandora box that is open. And I don't see how we put this back in the box. The world is tired of us. Look at what we do socially. We are queer We let criminals roam the streets. We no longer live by the rule of law. We are sexually queer and perverted with children. How shameful. We have lost what it was that made America a great nation. We've always had our problems, but we still had a core value And that is gone. We are losing it. Now that you're seeing these nations walking away from the dollar, the question's going to become, and these where the talking heads will go, well, they may say that, but they're probably, they're not going to be able to get away from the dollar. It's not going to be that easy. They have loans in dollars and they need the dollar and there's no other currency with viability and confidence. And I think they're going to be wrong. I think the world is going to rapidly move. The BRICs are going to rapidly create a new currency. How that's backed up is probably through commodities. You're going to be stunned when China and Russia come out and announce how much gold they really have, especially China. They've been lying to the world. They're communists, mind you. They lie. Just like the communists in our country, they lie all the time. No integrity, no honor. We are in the seventh stage of the collapse of our nation. And I think they want that. I'm actually becoming convinced it's being done on purpose and not ignorance. Now, mind you, I still think these people, all these communists on the left are definitely ignorant, but they're evil. And so they're blinded to a truth. But I do believe it's being done on purpose because once the empire of America collapses, 
the global power elite will be able to form the one world order, which everybody seems to think is a conspiracy theory. You're kidding yourself if you think it is. And they will then institute tyranny and authoritarianism like you have never seen. We spent decades complaining about Cuba, complaining about now we're looking at Venezuela or Argentina and these nations that were once great had fallen to tyranny in, in communism. They're going to control the world through digital ID, digital currency, programmable money, and if you are anywhere near opposition to it, they will cut your money off. And if you don't believe it, just look what they did to the Canadians, the truckers. Went right into their bank account and took their money. So I believe the collapse of our empire, America's great time, is definitely being done on purpose. And the whole idea of make America great was truly an exceptional idea. For those people that don't like Trump, I don't get you. I don't like his behavior, but he is a New Yorker and he's a scrapper, so I get that. I wish he would be more presidential and firm at the same time. He would get a lot a lot farther with the soccer moms that are not really paying attention because they just don't like his style. I get it. But Make America Great was a phenomenal idea. Let's bring back manufacturing to the United States. Let's make America great, which means... All of you out there has access or would have access to high paying jobs. Money would circulate and we would be really wealthy. They can't have that. The international power elite order cannot have a powerful, wealthy America. And that's why they hate President Trump so much. President Trump was the first president in history to be wiretapped, spied on. They they created the whole Russian hoax. And now they're indicting him locally on complete garbage charges. If we want to start indicting a president, we, we could indict every single president right down to George Bush, who dropped these uh, depleted uranium bombs in, in Iraq. People don't talk about that. Depleted uranium is waste from these nuclear facilities and it it poisons the land. Poisons the land for decades. You should see the babies that are being born in Iraq because of the bombs we dropped. For decades, Iraq will be harmed because of depleted uranium. These babies are born looking like monsters. And now they want to drop, because England said it, they're going to give depleted uranium to Ukraine. They want to drop depleted uranium in Ukraine, which is like the breadbasket of the world. So much wheat comes out of Ukraine and Russian region that feeds the world. Now, we in the United States are okay. We can feed ourselves although they're doing everything they can in a really coincidental way, destroying all of our food processing plants, destroying our farmland, weird train derailments, so let's go on and on there. We can feed ourselves, but Ukraine and Russia is vital to the food supply of Africa, Middle East, and a lot of people. So let's just go and drop depleted uranium in Ukraine, destroying the breadbasket of the world, And maybe that's their plan. Depopulation. Start spreading around radiated wheat and watch what happens. We are losing ground. What's been happening in the last two years is horrific. It's not even a debate of Republican or Democrat. It is true ideology of free people. And the worst part about it, we as Americans are so apathetic. The heads are so buried in the sand. You're still cruising along thinking everything is fine. You are in for a doozy of a surprise. Now, I'm not saying we have to be afraid, but boy, you better start preparing for a major disruption to not just the supply chain, but food and all. 
I would be ready, especially if you live anywhere in the vicinity of a city. And I think it's all by design as we walk ourselves right into the seventh stage of the seven stages of an empire and we watch America go down. How do we change it? Stop the queer, perverse ideology in this nation and stop being a bully to the world and start getting along and doing real business that I think President Trump could have easily done. And it just shows you how bought off our country is that many, not just on the left, but even in the Republican Party, are bought off short-term gain for them They don't care about the country. And you know it because they're the people who are against Trump. Trump is iconic. We in America have never had such a leader in modern time. And the establishment can't stand it because they want to take us to the one world order. And he was stopping them. And unfortunately, he had too many traitors in the house. This is epic, and it's bigger than you think, and I really believe with these countries making these announcements, it's accelerating a lot faster than people think. So until next week, God bless each and every one of you. With all of the recent changes in the political and financial markets, there has never been a better time than right now to invest in silver and gold. When governments simply print billions of dollars in paper money in hopes of solving financial shortfalls, you know that it is time to buy and hold assets of true and lasting value. Free information is available to you right now by calling 888-747-3309. Whether you are a new investor or you're interested in preserving the value of your retirement accounts, we make it easy for you to make smart decisions for your financial future. The specialists at Cornerstone are here to serve you, work to satisfy your retirement goals, and communicate with respect. Call us right now at 888-747-3309. That's 888 888- 747-3309 or visit us online at cornerstoneassetmetals.com that's cornerstoneassetmetals.com